Well, that's a perfect segue, I think, because I was going to use this next segment to talk about the Me Too campaign that's going on around the world. Yeah. Yeah, so we sort of, there's so much anxiety, depression, stress, yeah. PTSD, uh, panic attacks. Panic attacks, oh my gosh, every man and his dog is having them these days. I just think it's one of these things. There's a 100-year study that's been completed in America and they found that anxiety has increased by 10% every year over the last 100 years. So uh, every 10 years it's yeah. increased by 10%. So we don't seem to be as resilient as we used to be. But there were things that probably, I mean... When I was growing up, you, you're probably the same, I mean, I'm a lot older than you, but we used to go out and, and you know, all the things that we used to do, we'd, we'd sometimes wouldn't wash our hands and pick up and eat, 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 eat our food or... Yeah, without like, stressing so much about everything. Your parents yeah. didn't stress, you'd, you'd, you'd go out and play and you'd come back for lunch and then you'd disappear again and think, hang on a minute, the street lights are coming on, oh, I think I better go home. That's right. You know? <laughs> but there was no... No anxiety, there was no... You just played with your friends. Yeah. And you, you didn't hear about all the things that no. were going on. And I don't... Do you think it was going on or do it, you think we weren't it, hearing about it as it, much? It, it probably was going on. Yeah. But, I mean, you look at the stories now and they're, they're doing cold cases and it probably wasn't going on. But as a little kid... You, you were, were unaware of you it. You were unaware yeah. of it. You didn't, you didn't read newspapers or anything like that. You might have read a comic book. Yes. But you didn't read newspapers. And it wasn't it wasn't thrown in your face like it is no. now. And, and the, I believe that media's got a lot to do. I you know, totally agree. And I think that's one of the things. Now. Yeah, and these days with people on their phones all the time, oh, yeah, and they're yeah. constantly getting the updates of what's going on around the world. So it's easy to get overload. And I think that's one of the things that I tell my clients with anxiety don't watch the news. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure everyone knows this. Don't watch the news. Don't read the newspaper. Don't open those mm -hmm. headlines that you see yeah. come up on your phone. You know, it's because that adds more information into your brain. And your brain, your brain, in the same way your brain doesn't know what's real and what's not. When we're a child and we're watching a scary movie, mm -hmm. what we watch can become part of our neuronal makeup in our brain. Right. So if we watch things that are too early with too much violence, with too much scariness, I remember my cousin, she was about 14 when Titanic came out. Oh, right. And she watched it in that scene at the end where everyone's floating around on yeah. the ocean. She didn't sleep for like a week because she just had those visions oh, in her right. head. And she was 14 and she was fairly well-rounded as a human being, but it was just too much for her brain. And I think we're doing this with newspaper articles. We're doing it with news. We're doing it, you know, because it's always there. But not only that, you've got the young kids you know, are playing these games. And they're done so violent. Yeah. When they shoot somebody and the person stands up and they want to re reenact it. But what they don't realise is that when you shoot somebody, they don't get up again. No, they don't. You don't get life number three. No, yes. that's exactly right. And I, I personally, I'm very much against Xbox. Yes. For, for young kids because they just get so involved. I know with my grandson, they get involved with it. And you're trying to get them off. It's like trying to pull teeth. You know, yeah. It's sort of... Come on, you've got to come inside. I just, just want, just, just want. That's just want, right. And I just sort of you get frustrated. And it is very addictive. It's it like very it's addictive. like their exercise, except it's not doing them any good. You know, they're getting that real dopamine, serotonin burst every time they're shooting someone. Every yeah, time yeah, they're yeah. creating that little world that they're mm -hmm. living in. It's. And they've actually had, but my son's a gamer and has been forever. And he sort of says that there are people around the world who actually die playing games. Really? Because they, yeah, oh. so in places I didn't like, know that. yeah, so it is, there's a, there's a young man's uh, gaming syndrome or something, you know, it's called something, oh. but they simply will not leave their room. They can play for days on end and dehydrate and starve themselves because the dopamine release, yeah, there's been quite a bit of it in the gaming world. They know uh, quite a lot about it. Every, everybody, like, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, I've got my mobile phone and I'll look at it occasionally and go, oh, yeah, okay, or, I'm now coming to the 21st century where I've got a computer and everything, but I don't spend days on it. I'm yeah. browsing. I look at it every morning and go, oh, yeah, well, nothing important there. And I might write a comment, but you know, those people are just on them constantly. I mean, you even go to restaurants and people are texting each other where they, nobody talks. Yeah. It is amusing. How often do you go somewhere these days and all three people at the table will be sitting there with their mobiles out? Like, it is a very interesting society it's, we're living in. To me, that's, it, to me, it's the height of rudeness. Yeah. It is a height of rudeness. Or they'll take photos of what they're eating. Who cares what you're eating? It's just... Yeah. 
you know so. it's pretty yeah so and I and I think one of those things you know when when we were kids we knew what was polite and what what, what yeah. was not I think those sort of rules are changing now well it's still rude but everyone does it so therefore you know we sweep it under the carpet and don't sort of mention it so much I don't know about you but I would never I never disres- disrespected my grandparents or my father my back answered my father mate I would have been sitting on the floor with all the boot <laughs> up the backside or something like that I mean he wasn't a violent person yeah, yeah. but you were taught right from wrong and, yes and, and that's I don't think that's happening these days. Yeah. I just think they let them do whatever they want. And I wonder do. if that's part of the problem with this lack of resilience, yes, there's more be. more anxiety these days because there's parents aren't allowed to have the boundaries they had twenty and I'm and I'm not talking about people who abuse their children no. and that sort of thing. But the boundaries are very waffly these days. You know, like many schools there are schools out there who refuse to say the word no, so they never say no. They always give the child a choice about what they can and can't do. Like, well, do you think that's a good thing to do, little Johnny? Rather than saying, don't put your finger in the PowerPoint. You know, so it's <laughs> it's there, there's all sorts yeah. of funny rules that they're doing so that children never feel naughty and they never feel um, attacked. But on the other hand, you don't want to wait for a four-year-old to realise the right answer for something. It's like, hang on. We need to get this. We need to get this right now. And as for my my grandbaby Teddy, he had his first day at daycare last week, last oh. Wednesday, and he came home with a uh, bruise on his forehead where a kiss went slightly wrong. I think I'm not sure whether it was a bite, but uh, you know, oh, first day, little four month old Teddy. Oh, but well. yeah, anyway, it's all good. But there is a lot. Of, there's a lot of things happening out there. Like we were talking before uh, in the break about the things that hit the headlines in the last what. 24 hours. It's, exactly. It's, it's what this man has done to all these women. Yeah. And, it's... and I think women are now getting brave enough to speak out. Personally, I think they should go to the police. I don't think they need to be splashing it over no. uh, over their headlines. And I think that's one of the things that's wrong at the moment mm. is that people without due process, yeah. Uh, yeah. men are being accused of things. Yeah. But nonetheless, I think women are starting to feel heard and they're starting to feel at long last like, okay, well, just because it was my uncle or my teacher or my priest I can now say about it and and really yeah, and, and even if there's no justice at least they're being heard and I think too it's it's it's, it's like yeah we, if you had to said something we that didn't happen that yeah didn't happen. yeah one and of that's, my that's good if, if you're not being believed yes as you're growing up you would be so, oh. you would be so um I don't think anxiety ridden but but the self-worth, self-esteem yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't be there. You wouldn't feel worthy of yourself. Yeah. yeah. And because we treat a lot of PTSD in the clinic, it's yeah. like once people have that belief that they're not worthy or they don't deserve a good life or why would anyone ever treat them well, yeah. they almost attract those bad relationships yeah. to them. So often it's not just one person. Once someone is abused, if something amazing doesn't happen to turn them around, quite often that's a pattern that just goes through their lives. And it can go from husband to partner to... Yeah. And, I, and actually, men can be abused just as easily oh, as women. I mean, I mean we, we, we do a big campaign about women being abused, but I, I'd say it's probably 25% yeah. of men out there that, that cop it as well. Yeah. And, it's, it's, and of course, being men being men, they just go, I'm a man, I'm not going to say anything. Exactly. And they hide it in, which makes them feel bad about themselves yeah. and... You know, it's and it's not the same, just a, obviously. It's just a cycle, isn't it? It really is. And that cycle of abuse, I think, once again, exactly what we're doing, people have to talk about it, people have to be aware of it so that someone can say, hey, I'm not happy. Yeah. You know, so that I... Because unless someone acknowledges that, hey, I'm not happy in this situation or yeah. I'm not happy that happened to me, yeah. how can you move forward? Well, that's true. You know, it because really if we if we are just living in the muck and mire that is our lives and it's not good, mm. then you just continue the same old pattern. So is there any way, is, is, in such situations like that, is there any way um, Medicaid, like you, you work in the yes. natural health and everything, and does anything that you do help help those people on yeah. with, with the advice that you give them yeah. on what they to take? So things? for a start, things that help to give... So we're talking about resilience. So mm. there are supplements that actually boost people's resilience. There's right. herbs called adaptogens. And what they do is help you deal with more stress before you fall apart. Right. So the same way the lung herbs we were chatting about before, mm-hmm. there are things that do that for the nervous system. Oh, okay. So there are herbs like uh, Bacopa moniere and uh, Romagna and oats and nettles and lots and lots of things that when we give them to people they get stronger and what what happens initially is that they don't notice they're doing better until they come home from work one day and thought huh 
that would have really bugged me today and they just mm. sort of cruise through it. Or hubby might say something about dinner and mm. instead of flying off the handle because, you know, he's been sitting at home all day and I've been working eight hours, you know, you sort of go, mm, well, you know, how about we add blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. so it, it's like people just start to cope better yeah. and then they start to notice and then we do either the, you know, the kinesiology or the universal consciousness okay. or whatever we have to do to start re right. repatterning their brains. Okay, well, we'll go back to some more music. Beautiful. And we'll be back with some more topics.